Perfect. All right, perfect. Well, we'll Can get things started. Screen? Yeah, uh, so we have a, a wonderful speaker today. We've got uh, Jakob Wordinger, who's the business development manager at Droney Aerospace. Droney's been around for a while. I saw them at Oshkosh. They have a, a fantastic design uh, in the works. They're based in Florida. They've been around for more than five years. Jakob has been their business development manager there for more than two years. And uh, he's got a really cool background as an industrial engineer um, and, uh, and, and management. Uh, student. He uh, was with the Israeli Defense Force. He's he's already founded two startups uh, that were successful, and um, he's just doing some really amazing things at at, at Deroni. They're uh, they're I think pursuing the, uh, the Part Twenty Three certification path, which is uh, you know it's it's a, it's a mystery to some extent to all of us. So um, I'm I'm looking forward to learning about what Deroni is doing, and then let's do everything we can to to help each other and help Deroni to succeed. So, with that, Yakov, take it away. Okay, thank you so much. Um, as you said, like I'm I'm actually when I when I just uh, heard about about a about an eVTOL company coming after two startups, and I know how 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 hard is a startup. So, and I know how hard it is. It doesn't matter if it's like. Uh, if it's a new industry or it's uh, you know may maybe more you know like a common industry or something that people are more used to but especially when something is so new and startup in general it's so hard i remember when i met Doron, it's like i was after like uh, i saw like oh, i have some i have the ability to to really relax for for uh, for for some time and he and he's telling me that he's working in a startup i say okay good luck and uh, and uh, and and that what you do and do is flying cars. I say, okay, <laughs> this is crazy. I never heard about it. It's, it's something that I I just didn't know how to capture it. It was funny because my wife actually she she went to the university in Israel. She's uh, she was she studied uh, in one of the I think he's a big professor. Forgot his name, and he said, no, take it seriously. Like I in two thousand and. Uh, I think around what is was like maybe fifteen or something. He he told them that one day we will stop commuting with cars or less commuting with cars. We start flying, and it's gonna happen by twenty thirty or two. so. He kind of predicted like fifteen years ago, and and this is when I started taking it seriously and I started diving to this topic more. Um, in any case, my name is as uh, Andrews as say. My name is Jakob Werdiger, and I'm the business development manager at the Rony Aerospace. Um, let's see. No, Opa. that should move. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, it should move. Yeah, maybe give it a me. second. Oh, there we go. Now okay. it's moving. Perfect. So, um, we are Drone Aerospace, and we are taking a whole new and different approach. Uh, 2016, we started uh, with a vision in a garage to democratize in flight by creating a personal eVTOL that anyone can own, fly, and park in their garage. This is the H1. This is the Roni H1. The H1 is also incredible, easy to use with an intuitive control system that simplified the complexities of helicopters and airplanes so anyone can operate it. We, we call that democratizing flight. So let me tell you a little bit of our perspective. So in 2016, I think most of the market was very much focused on air taxi and you know this type of, of, of EV tolls. I think later on, or maybe in the same time, cargo also kicked in, but I think most of the buzz until in the, in today is maybe focusing very much on, 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 the, on, the, e, on the air taxi part of uh, segment. Let's, let's put it like that. Um, but when we started at, at 2016, what, what, what basically uh, it was our assumption, and we, we continue with that, and it's a, something that we are proven to for ourselves, and I think now the, also industry, the industry understand it more and more, that there is two elements to, for, uh, when it's coming to commuting, there is two elements. The one element is to actually moving from point A to point B. This is one thing people need to be very practical, want to go from here to there. But, but we understood there is another element to it. And there is a level of freedom that a person have or wants to have when it's, when it's coming to, to commuting. If it's coming to, I don't know, coming to be the end of the day, you want to get into your car, you finish your day, you want to get into your car, put your music and just drive home. 
you want to take some time, you want to travel, you want to be with your family. This is a level of freedom. This is a level of, of, of uh, I don't know how you articulate it. It's more than just a freedom. It's like independent freedom that every person in an emotional, an emotional level, not necessarily in a practical level, in an emotional level, but it is a factor. It's, it's, it's something that provides the freedom that a person needs and wants. So at that aspect, it's basically help us to understand that this is something that we know that, that you know, it's going to work together with the eVTOL segments. It's something that eventually will help us to, to solve the, the needs that actually people want. And the reason that I'm saying that, because I think what, what's leading us in, to, to this, through this process, it's really to understand before what the solution, it doesn't matter if it's to build the application system or building the navigation system, or building the virtual reality simulator, or building the eVictol itself, or the camera, it doesn't matter what aspect in the building we are, we are focusing on. What really, what, what, what really guide us is, who are you, our customer? What is your need? And what do you, what do you want? What do you need that we hear and want, want to solve? So we are located in, in Miami, Florida, uh, where eVictol is strongly encouraged by the local authorities. Um, there have been over 230 requests for pre-orders since we opened pre-orders recently. Um, we are on track to complete the first test flight by the end of this year. And when it's coming to raising money, we chose to go with crowdfunding for mainly two reasons. One, in early stages company, Venture Capitals wants to give you as less as possible for as much as possible with thinking long-term versus short-term. And that time, we realized there is another, another, path, another path of raising money called crowdfunding was a pretty much a, maybe a new thing, but equity crowdfunding. But this is a risk that you're taking. And if it's work, it's great. If it's not, it's not so great. But the, the reason that we decided basically to go with crowdfunding, it was mostly because the reason that I just mentioned like uh, just to... to seconds ago we want to know our customers and this is something that you cannot get from and anywhere in the way that you get it from crowdfunding so i want just to describe you maybe a little bit the process so when you start a crowdfunding campaign you need to advertise you need to put yourself as a company of who you are and what you're building in front of a lot of people and these people are not necessarily educated venture capitals or family offices or this type of investors it's just like the regular guy making, I don't know how much money a year. And he's like, this is the, the guy that eventually will need to accept and need to adopt this type of vehicle. And then we started getting great response. And I will talk about it later, why I'm mentioning it. But for us personally, he taught us a lot, still teaching us a lot. We learn every day what the customer really need, what they want, what they care about, what the approach and how we market it. And simple as, you know, we add just the place for um uh a golf uh, equipment in the back because you know we got some 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 customer uh, like customers called reaching out to us and say I, I would love to have this uh, uh you know a vehicle that I can fly to play golf and I want to have equipment simple and maybe you know not very important as it is but it is important because this is what the customer really wants of course we have different customer segments if it's coming to law enforcement we also working with the police we also working with other law enforcement and and uh, other uh, like EMS and so on and getting their own requirements. Um, and but again, this is just an example to get feedback from potential customers. So the Deroni H1 leverage safety feature like patent duct propellers, anti collusion sensors, airframe parachutes, and more. So we can put it in the class with the safest vehicle on the market today, molded in the sleek and provocative design aesthetic. So if you can see what, uh, what I think this is, this is what is an assumption that again was proven uh, with reaching out, talking and listening to customers that I think safety, it's a major thing. And safety, it can be like, I'm going to show you later on question and, and, and some, you know, uh, barriers that, or worries that that we we dealt or deal uh deal with but i think when it's coming to building the ev toll the personal ev toll every time you're making a decision if we're going to make it faster but it's going to be maybe less safe 
the, the answer is very clear. We're going to make it safer. It's going to be a little bit more even nicer, a slick design, or the system going to do this and that, or we're going to adopt this type of technology and not going to adopt the, the first check mark that we, we basically try to, not try, but basically, you know, uh, 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 completed is, is this is a, uh, answer the safety requirements or safety standards. But the EV toll is not just another vehicle. I think it's a paradigm shift in time and space. And I'll explain. Basically, when we when we have like another e, another EV car, it's 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 another it's another maybe it's a very cool vehicle giving you a different uh, you know a different uh, ex type of uh, uh, drive experience, which is great. But I think I think it's it's very early to understand the change. But let's say if I'm planning my day right now and going to take my kids to school and it's going to take me 40 minutes because traffic, time, the concepts of time, the way I'm planning my day is changing because now I don't need to spend so much time. Um, the concept of space. Now we're serving every, every businesses or services or whatever, whatever, whatever that surround us currently is basically work in a kind of a two dimension world, but we move into three dimension world. And this is, we are very creative as a human, human race. And you will see, I believe in the next 20 years, different services and different businesses and different ideas that start to be more compelling for the three dimension type of commuting. And this is a change in a concept of what space is and what time is and the way that we know and very used to it. So the question is, is the world is ready? The question that I want to ask is, the, if, is the world is, is ready? So I think that everyone here in the room uh, pretty much know that the revolution is coming. Look at the number, you know, talking about $6 billion was invested in 2021. It's 10.7 billion was the, the, the combines of the whole, uh, the five largest air taxi companies. Morgan Stanley talking about $9 trillion uh, uh, market by 2050. There is a quote here from Morgan, the last report from Morgan Stanley also, we don't think the investor are prepared for the scope of the revolution. So yes, I think one side, at least in the industry or in this world, definitely understand that the revolution is coming. But what also I see, and we also we can we can learn that let's say for Pernasa, lack of public knowledge about the urban air mobility presents a serious challenge to the adoption of EV tolls. So if you can see here, just another quote from NASA. Yes, we one side of the of the population we can put it like that. Investor, more sophisticated people, are really aware and know what's going on. They understand the values that's coming. But in the same time, some people, it's the average Charlie in the world, he really have no idea what is urban air mobility at, at all. And it's not just this. Like public officials in local communities don't understand urban air mobility either. The corporation is critical to getting. Uh, urban air mobility of the ground. So as we went with crowdfunding, we have we have the luxury to first contact with the potential customer at large scale. So we understand the barriers better every single day. And let me tell you something. The public acceptance, I think it's the elephant in the room that every evital company faces, regardless. Forward to you the Zoom link if you're interested. Hey, what? David, um, you can mute. Okay, regardless, regardless of sector. So I basically, I put like a very simple slide just to, 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 to maybe visualize that a little bit better. But again, as we got, in, as we got to, uh, uh, as I said before, because we, we went crowdfunding, because we touching and talking to this customer in very much on a daily basis, I want to give you some example how how it's looked like. Okay, so let me share with you uh, a little bit examples. We getting and and I and to just pick like a taste from from different comments, question that we getting, email that we receiving, uh, Facebook responds, fake messages all day, all along with many many channels. So we learned this uh, we learned this comments and we highly appreciate this comment for the, for the last seven months. Questions like, how are you going to manage traffic in the sky when so many drones are flying and flying car will fly there? 
Um, we cannot even handle people driving car. How many, like, how are you going to, like, you know, this is type of question. It's always continue with something like that. Like how we can handle drive. If you cannot handle driving, how you let other people really fly. It's crazy. I always, uh, another question, just to, to understand, I think it's important to understand wh- how the average person is really look at this. So I've always kind of wonder how flying cars will be possible for people to have before the police department is their own various versions. What do, uh, what do they do if they try to pull someone over and then fly away? So you, just to, this is a great question because I think what people really think is the way it's going to work in the sky, it will be like you driving is the way you drive in a car and the police, it's gonna, not going to be a car police, it's going to be an EVTO police hovering on the side. And if you see somebody, somebody speed up, speed too much, they're going to chase him in the sky. So this is the concept. This is the mind that people have. And with that mind, it's very, very hard to educate people. We move into a different, again, as we said, a, a paradigm shift in time and space. Terror attack, cyber attacks, the same thing. What about birds, battery technology? What happened if the car failed? We're getting so many questions. Oh, I fr- I'm afraid to start getting a rain of cars falling from the sky. You know, this is... Uh, what happened if this, like, you can pull over? You know, people, again, they look into their own car. If there's something happened, they pull over and decide. What happened if, if, if one of the EVTOL fail? You, you pull over? Where you pull over? Serious question. It's not necessarily a cynical question. It's just showing to us, and I think to everybody, what the mindset of the people. So after we took, we took it very seriously, we taken all these questions, we summarized them, we're learning this question and, and, and we put them in the main, in, we understand and we realize that the main five categories that most of the people focusing on are air, t- air traffic control and air traffic management, safety, never going to happen, just people not believing anything, combustion energy will be forever, also happen, regulation, the certific- certification process, Terrorism, uh, cyber, cyber attacks and stuff like that. This is the main issues that we're dealing with. And it, it, as much as we're doing in a, in a large scale, the way you would call it, like I, I think like probably hundreds of thousands of people that, that, that we reaching out and or, or at least like putting ourselves in front of, um, it's still nothing compared to, you know, the, the, the population in the world that eventually will start using eVTOL. But it's definitely... Statistically presenting the idea and the concept, and give you give us a sense of what is going on. So, at Aeroni Aerospace, our mission is to is is to democratize flight with a personal two seater eVTOL that any anyone can own and park uh, in the in the two car garage, and we are doing it by directly engaging and educating our potential future customers and supporters. So we believe that now it's the time for eVTOL developers to begin working together to educate the public. I would like to take this opportunity for two. I know that we have, um, 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 you know, a session that you know guys can you can guys ask questions and and I would like you to ask questions about the Roni if you have any open to it. I'm, I'm I like it again. We're going to crowdfunding. I think we got. All the not all, but most of the questions that, that, that exist. So we definitely open. I would like to share with you more information. But in the same time, I I, I would like to brainstorm with 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 the industry. And and it doesn't matter again if you are air taxi, if it's a cargo, if it's an ultralight, if it's a sport aircraft, or whatever it is. Any eVTOL together working toward the public education, the public acceptance. I believe that if we're working on this together, not as like separately, everybody tries to solve this thing. It's just like to define what are the, the, the barriers that we need to deal with and really start educating the people. It's going to benefit all of us way better than just like do it separately, every, every, everyone. Um, yeah. Uh, that this is for me. Um, I don't know. I know you gave me like 20 minutes. I maybe did it faster. I, I, I hope it's good enough for you, Andrew. Uh, but yeah, go ahead. You can feel free to ask me any question I'm looking to hear. Yeah, that's perfect. That's brilliant and uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, we always we always want to know more about the aircraft and development and things like that. And you're uh, you're you're really touching on a, a critical issue: is that there's this sort of tidal wave of technology and uh, communi- and uh, uh, transportation changes that are coming down the pipeline that people don't see, and when and and people have difficulty with change, right? 
uh, in any part of their life, and they generally don't like it. That's their first their first gut instinct is it's different. I don't know it. I don't like it. It's bad. And so we have to do a good job of being our own stewards, tell people understand what's happening and and what the positive aspects are. Does that sound like what you were thinking as well? Um, yes, but 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 yes, definitely. I think I think. But I, you will be surprised. A lot of people love it. A lot of people say, "Oh, wow, this is a great solution. We need it." Like, listen. But bottom line, it's solving a need. It's solving a problem that people don't want to. Uh, traffic, it's it's unbearable, and it doesn't matter if you're driving an electric vehicle in traffic or you're driving like a combustion engine in traffic. You're still in traffic. So I think the problem that people dealing with, it's just not fun, and people want a solution. Think it's not going to get any better. So I think AV tool is definitely a solution for that. We move in 3D in, which is great. But in the same time, it's coming with some some, some barriers of it's a it's a huge vision. And, and sometimes it's hard for people to capture this this vision because it's just a big vision. Um yeah. I, I think we just need to define it instead of said, okay, it's hard for people, let's break it down. What hard? What is hard for you? Oh, safety hard for you. Let's break it down to another five places. What exactly is safety hard for you? And then let's give the answers because we can have like TV shows talking with with uh, Billy Nolan talking about personal EV to oh, so sorry EV tolls coming on in 2024 maybe 2025 whatever but and, and it's gonna be like oh very nice people get it but still the questions the hard questions coming up like he's going with his wife he said listen I watched this beautiful show but my wife asking him oh what's gonna happen if somebody's gonna drop oh no 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 not for me and this is the end of the story for them mindset is changing. We want yeah. them, we want to help them. I believe we should break it down. We're doing it for ourselves. This is the way we attack it. But I, I, I would like, and I would love to have industry together attacking this thing and, and help educate the people almost in a math level. Because once yeah. you break down all these assumptions, all these barriers, it's it's going to help the market grow way faster. Yeah, in my opinion. For sure. No, you raise a good point, Yaakov. So I've just dropped into the, chat uh, a link to an organization called the Community Air Mobility Initiative. And um, they're working on some of the exact things that you're talking about. And mm -hmm. we can help them and they can help us along those lines. Um, so check that out. And um, Nicholas, you have your hand up. Yeah, I you 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 mentioned points are very dear to me. I was a journalist for 15 years, and all of these questions that you you see popping up are things I've seen in the EV space. The same, you know, naysayers and everything. Of course, now it's the same thing in electric aviation. And when the maritime world catches up, it'll be exactly the same thing. So I can I'd love to talk to you guys after this and not you know take up so much of that time. But there are definitely some questions you don't even want to answer because people are just showing up with their personal problems, and there's nothing you can do. Oh, there. Yeah. Unless you get a good psychiatrist behind you, but most of them <laughs> but you yeah, have yeah. other other specific points you can go point by point uh, and a little bit of coaching. You know, who are you talking to? You know, when somebody says, "Well, have you thought of safety?" You know, okay, this guy knows nothing about aviation yet, 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 and then you can kind of anchor down in that. So, but if you ever want to continue that talk, I'd love to because it's something that yeah, I I've experienced firsthand and it's brutal, absolutely brutal. Um, <laughs> One thing that I did that caught my eye when I went to your website and I started looking down more is energy dissipating body and lending gear. Can you talk a little bit specifically the body, what you mean by that? Uh, uh, we have, I also have here, uh, Charles. Charles, you you listen to it, you're here with us? Of course. So uh, I think you can give a better answer for, for this than, than me. I'm sorry, I was distracted for about half a second. What was the, Nicholas, what was can the question? Can you the question, please? And Charles will join I, here. And I really like seeing this on your website because I haven't seen anybody else talk about this. Is energy dissipating body and, and of course, lending gear. Lending gear, I can wrap my head around it. Body, I can have a pretty good idea, but I think it's a very good point. I think you're the only one who mentions that. about it? No, this is this is my favorite technology. Um, my, my background, I'm a 17th year Learjet captain. And we... They have this technology in their cars. We had a passenger, uh, one of the drivers hit a wall at 200 miles an hour head on. And I'm like, nope, he won't be showing up. He'll be in the hospital, broken legs, whatever going on. He showed up with gel packs on his knees, walked away from it, walked up to the airplane. I think he had one crutch, something like this. But he hit the wall at 200 miles an hour. This is the same technology we're looking to put into this. The way the... Uh, the way the carbon fiber gets molded together and everything becomes one piece, 
the 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 parts the individual parts become a whole which gives it its structure and its rigidity so and that's really interesting what you're saying because we know how to hey, teach you me this, this one? it's okay but she needs to learn too <laughs> um it you know with, with with metal we know how to do crunch zones and and crumpling zones and everything but carbon right. fiber that's that's really interesting are you going to be able to talk more about that or just secret sauce um we've got a guy involved that's doing all our carbon fiber for us he's a expert in the industry um i'm not going to say a whole lot about him yakov can explain more he knows more about him than i do if he wants to yeah, elaborate but that again part, I, th but, I think uh, this is this is where we're getting to uh the limit how much right. you want to disclose you know <laughs> right <laughs> I'll let, I'll let you deal with this, Charles. But no, I think I think I think this is the max we can yeah. actually uh, we can actually really disclose that point. Got to have a couple yeah, secrets. We, we right? have a good guy involved. He's taking care of all this. So you can't chase the journalist away from me. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <you're> good. <laughs> Got to ask. Got to ask. So uh, I love your ducted fan design. I think it's brilliant, and I, I think it's a huge safety feature. Are there efficiencies that go along with that as well? Yeah, I'll keep going with this one, I guess. Um, okay. No, absolutely. In, in every ducted fan, we've got the four ducted fans you can see here. Uh, in every ducted fan, we have four motors and four individual props. Um, we can lose a motor in every corner and still successfully sustain flight. Can you, I'm sorry, can you read that back? How many motors and props are in each duct? We've got four ducted fans, one in each corner. Yeah. In each corner, we have two motors. Sorry, the kids are home from school today. She's... That's great. <laughs> um, it's, it's a oh, hurricane, hurricane day. Hurricane day. Um, right. But uh, there's two motors and two sets of props in each ducted fan. That's So we brilliant. can lose one motor in every corner and successfully fly. That's amazing. Pitch blades or oh, sorry, P pitch blades or or not? They're fixed, fixed pitch. Sorry, not variable. Yes, he is. Andrew, with us? Yeah, sorry about that. Zoom decided mid meeting that it would like to know my password, <laughs> and that uh, I might not be who I say I am. So I'm sorry about that. If you can hit the record button again. I love technology. I don't love this. Uh, it says recording. It is. Okay. All right. So very quickly, we asked about what were the future plans for Doroni. So far, you have a two-seater. And and I don't know if you want to repeat it again, Jacob, or you want me to summarize it? No, I say we started with, as, as I said before, we started with a two-seater. Uh, just want, we understand that, uh, I, I said, let's look at Tesla. We're talking about the, the Roadster with the most successful car for them. So I think most of the people in driving like one or two people in the vehicle and with a 500 pound of payload, it's kind of good enough to serve the uh, first audience that we are talking about. But definitely later on, when we believe the certification will move faster and forward, this is when we kicked in with, four or five, six seaters, different designs and options. Yeah, definitely. And as a reminder, I'm in Savannah, Georgia, so not too far away from you guys. So if you want to do a test flight over here, you're more than welcome. I've got a good backyard. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So I, I may have missed this, but are you, you're certifying under, is it um, part 23? Yeah, so we're talking about the under the LSA. There is, as you know, probably the mosaic. It's uh, still a work. I think this is, uh, again, as you said before, it's a little bit unknown at that point. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit unknown in that point. But this is what we are focusing on um, getting, uh, getting under the. Okay. Um. Getting under mosaic. Uh, yeah, this is it. Fantastic. That's exciting. It's not easy work. It's a lot of FAA interface. Well, a lot of, yeah. 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 It's easier and, than try to be to certify like a six, seven seater getting to uh, main cities. I, I believe it's going to be once, uh, you know, Joby and, and, and these type of companies will, will uh, work on their certification path. It's going to kind of be a little bit easier for two-seaters, they not necessarily need to go into the airport. 
Right, absolutely. It's and, an assumption, but maybe it's, it's maybe proven to be right. Hopefully it is. Yeah. And did I hear you say you've already got, is it uh, more than 200 deposits? Is that right? Or yeah, 200 so we get in interested like a 230 pre Yeah, so we basically, um, we, we kind of opened the pre-order just before we was ready to open for pre-order because what happened, we started to get, um, it was very interesting. We started, so there is a, we get an article, like nice article, in different, like one in Rob Report and Bloomberg and, and suddenly we are we are walking in the morning. We're getting like multiple requests to see okay something is going on. We didn't know what's going on, and we realized okay people wants to to place pre order. We we was forced to, you know, limit the resources. You need to do you need to know what you do first. But then we eventually opened the pre order uh, form and the process in our website, and we received like more than two hundred and thirty pre order requests for pre orders. Uh, starting um, again, our our the way we be requesting pre order is. Uh, we're meeting uh, or potentially meeting every every customer. We want to know who are you, um, at least for the beginning. Um, I think it's very extremely extremely important. So having like a fifteen to thirty minutes uh, time meeting with every customer to learn uh, who are you, why you need it, if it's a right fit for you, if it's maybe not a right fit for you. But we want to know and want to learn. I think it's it's very important. We're getting a ten thousand dollars deposit per customer. It's not like a it's not a thousand dollars deposit. It's something that we we wanna we wanna increase or well, let's say um you know when, when somebody's like putting a ten thousand dollars deposit it's not, it's not like like a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars deposit it's just the, the seriousness level is going up and it's important for us because we're not here for the short term we're very much here for the long term and learning from a person who put a ten thousand dollars deposit it's just a whole different class it's uh it's 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 really he putting more in more involved he's care more and he will to give, he want to give you more information. So we learned so much from the from that process as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, so somebody, please, uh, uh, please I, I have question if nobody else is gonna ask questions, but um, speaking of finances, do you have a price point that you guys are aiming towards? So currently we, we're talking about $195,000 to 250. It really depends on the, ver the version of, of the product that you're taking. Um, this is what we know for now. Things can change, you know, like if the supply and change is changing, nobody can really predict the future. But this is the time, the price range that we're talking about right now. Was uh, 195 to what was it? 200? 250. 250. 250. Yep. Right. Yep. That's fantastic. Yeah. Any other questions for Yaka before we move on to other, other business? This has been a fantastic conversation, both about the aircraft and about community acceptance. Uh, Andrew, I'm not sure if it's only me, but it's, I think you're cutting off. I, I don't know. Um, you know what I can do is switch off the ear pods and just talk what? without maybe, them. Maybe you by. stopped your video. It's, it's, it's going to make it faster. Yeah, potentially. Let's see. I mean, oh yeah, <laughs> no other way to do it. So I'm back, you guys, can you hear me? Hey, Andrew, yes. Art's got a decent computer. I have a, um, it's from Radio Shack and um, it's about 15 years old, so. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> uh, thanks for uh, your patience. So I was gonna pivot over to Nicholas and just, <laughs> perfect, and talk about events. That are upcoming with Vertical Flight Society, our fearless sponsor, and then um, maybe hear from uh, Dr. Pavel and talk about uh, plans for our white paper. Yeah, th and thanks, uh, Andrew. Yeah, indeed, we have uh, we have our big uh, um, event. It's basically a meeting with a local chapter in Mesa, Arizona, and we have our symposium with it. And so, if you go to vtol.org/autonomous. You can find out much more about it. Um, it's taking up 95% of my time. I love it. It's really great. We have some fantastic speakers. We have a lot of, uh, um, you know, government speakers or government regulatory body speakers. We've got military speakers. We've got Andy, Andrew, who's going to be speaking too, and I'm really excited about that. So I, I'm opening the invitation to uh, to all of you guys to come and see us, and and uh, and especially like come and and hang out with us right after uh, uh, everything happens, because that's when the socializing happens and the networking happens, and it's very common to have drinks up until two, three, four o'clock in the morning talking about what we love the most. So. 
that's that's the part obviously I like the most. So uh, yeah, but then again, if you go to yeah vtoll.org slash autonomous, you can find out more about it. And then I think Halimod is coming up before that, and that's in early um, December, if I believe it's on the 7th or the 8th or the 9th or something like that. So we'll also be there. And of course, vtoll.org slash events, and you can see all the vertical flight societies uh, upcoming events and why it takes me a little bit of time sometimes to answer emails or I forget things. Thank you.